now uh, 6.31. So I'd like to call um, tonight's meeting in order to be on the Budget Committee of, uh, despite what our agenda says, I believe it's December 11th, 2019. And uh, first order of business is a roll call, and I'm, I'm afraid I won't be able to do that. Rihanna, do you, do you call the roll? I'm afraid I'm going to miss something. Do you? Yeah, that's, um, I don't have a list, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we all just state our names and why don't we start here? Kelly Dale. Paul Cass. Peter Land Pieces. Emily. Suzanne Hewart. Joe Nash. Charlie George. Angela Matthews. Bob Neat. So is that okay? Are we all here except John Ordway? Is that Okay, excellent. So we'll just record that John is not here. We knew this ahead of time. He said he was not going to be able to, uh, to make it here this evening. So um, we have a couple of, of uh, we'll keep you things to take care of, and then we'll start with the major agenda item. So minutes of November 30th, my glasses on, November 20th, we have a motion to accept those minutes. So, do we want to wait another week? No. Yes, okay. Well, I suspect if we're going to wait a week for November 20th, we're going to wait another week for the last few minutes as well. Okay. Hearing uh, no dissenting opinion on that, we will wait until next week for both sets of meetings. Um, before, uh, Emily, I'm going to ask you to like to uh, introduce our panel. Sure. But before, before you do that, um, Welcome to all of you. And I just wanted to lay some ground rules down before we get started. So unless there's an objection by this panel to by the budget committee, we will just assume and that all of our panel members can speak as appropriate for, for tonight's presentation from the school. So given, uh, given that these are our experts on this. The other thing from a, a, a ground rule point of view is that <coughs> We'll ask Dr. Gadowski how he'd like to handle it, but however he wants to manage questions, whether throughout, during it, or at the end, as far as I'm concerned, you don't need to be recognized by me. I just ask that you be respectful. Don't speak over other people. And my role will be one of making sure that nobody is, uh, that we're following that. Okay? Is everybody all right with that? Yep. Okay, excellent. Then I'll ask Emily to please introduce stuff. Sure. So at the table in front of us, we have um, Judy Nelson, who is the chair of the Rollinsford School Board. We have Nancy Misho, who is the student services director through the SAU office. We have Robert Gadowski, who is the superintendent of SAU 56. Um, Katie Kraus, our business administrator, also SAU 56. And Rich Hartford, who is the principal here at the Rollinsford Grade School. Thank so, you all for being here. So Dr. Gadowski, I think I assume that you are going to be the major presenter. Sure. So. Uh, I'll, I'll take you through this. I think everybody has the binder. That's pretty much what we're going to be speaking to tonight. Uh, and to your, your statement a couple minutes ago, at any point in time as we go through this, if questions come up, we just soon answer them as we go. Uh, and I know that, that the, the team up here is going to jump in from time to time and, and add details and answer questions as well. So. Uh, hopefully, we can give you a very, very clear picture of all of the voting. Just to take you through the, the binder very quickly, and then I'll back up to go on over the budget. Uh, obviously, you've got your budget narrative, uh, and, which is a, a detailed accounting of, of the changes in the budget. Uh, the next section is the budget itself. We've got it split out between the overall budget, the RGS, Rollins for Grade School budget, and also the middle of budget as well, so you can see the split out. Um, we've got a section on revenue that we'll go over, enrollment, class size, giving you some information on, on what we have not over here, but at Marshall. Um, we've got the default budget in there. We'll go over the Warren articles at the end and explain our, our thinking in some of those. Um, and then as it stands for the tax impact, um, and then also the schedule for the deliberative session. Uh, before I start, I just want to go to the, go to the last page, the board goal. Uh, this is something that, that the goal has, has discussed uh, in the summertime, set the goals for the year. 
Uh, you can see that we've got three main overarching goals. One is uh, to support the SAU 56 Withdrawal Committee. Uh, the committee has been working diligently for months, uh, and actually tomorrow the plan, the final plan goes in front of the State Board of Education, and I'll be down there for that to, to help that along. So that's, uh, that's one of the goals. Uh, number two is, is to ex continue to explore the appropriateness of, of Rollins for grade six students going to Marshwood. Uh, that's been an ongoing process. We've had a public forum, uh, informational forum for parents. We've done a lot of research with Marshwood. Uh, so that's certainly a goal that's in progress. Uh, and the board will enter into uh, discussions for negotiations for teacher and paraprofessional Again, we, we have not got a, gotten a final agreement on that yet, but it's uh, well underway. So we hope that uh, by the time we conclude the budget preparation, hopefully we'll have uh, something to put in here with that as well. Yeah. For, for number two, I wasn't able to attend the meeting, but, and Judy, I know you and I talked about it. I, I was trying to find some of the presentation material from that that I could review. Is that anywhere available publicly? Uh, I'm trying to think of it was was there it out? It was taped, and I don't, I don't exactly know where the tapes are available. You Rollins vid videos it was YouTube. There, okay. I must have missed them. I looked at all of them. But there wasn't any presentation. Uh, we had a, a brief PowerPoint. I'll double check. I thought it was online on the website. But I'll it might be. I, I looked a number of times. I just called I'll double check. Okay. Now, to start with, I'm going to back up to the uh, budget narrative and ask Katie to briefly go over the, the highlights of the budget narrative. Um, so, in terms of our revenue, um, we are showing a decrease of about $148,000. That's due to um, the transfer of $97,000 um, in the fund that was last year for the current year for to go into the trust funds for the building of the trust fund as well as the and then we received our estimates from the state of New Hampshire for our advocacy payments, and those are also estimated to be going down by about fifty million dollars. In terms of expenditures, um, our budget is um, proposed to be down by thirty thousand eight hundred and twelve dollars um, for a total of five million six hundred and sixty-nine thousand two hundred and fourteen dollars. So that brings the net budget to um, one hundred eighteen thousand nine hundred and twenty-three dollars more than. So with that, for a better understanding of the budget, if you can go to the budget tab, um, and there should be a pink cover, and that's what I'm going to be working from for the next few minutes. So as I take you through the budget, I'll, I'll do the highlights and the increases and decreases, and, and by all means, if you have any questions along the way, please let us know. On page one, you'll see a decrease in, uh, starting right off, in teacher salaries. Um, this was mainly because of staff changes. We had a couple of retirements, uh, so those were adjusted accordingly. Uh, and it also includes an additional day of PE. We have discussed at the board level of adding additional movement, additional physical education time for our students, uh, and so that's included in the budget as well. Uh, going down a little bit more, you've got a decrease in uh, total benefits. Um, at, the overall health insurance rate, which is throughout this budget, was an increase of 4.5%. Dental insurance is a raise of an increase of 3.9%, and it always reflects staff changes. Now, any of the benefits, obviously, the health insurance, uh, it's a snapshot in time. Uh, if somebody takes a single plan or a family plan, obviously that, that adjusts accordingly. So if somebody has a life changing event, uh, a marriage or, or something like that, or if uh, we do staff changes, obviously that's adjusted. So this is this is with existing staff right now to, to do our best guess for next year. Okay. Who's your dental provider? We have um, Northeast Delta Dental, but it's administered through the health trust. Going down a little further, just touching on a few of the highlights, uh, contracted services technology, an increase of, of uh, $2,500, uh, again, trying to get that to more of the actuals. We did a lot of looking at past actuals the last two to three years and trying to uh, 
uh, get the budget where the detail is, is more accurate. Um, so that was one of the areas that we, we evened out a little bit. Um, you can go down through equipment repairs. You can see is a, a slight increase in internet access is a decrease. Um, tuition, about halfway down the page. Middle school tuition is a decrease of 59000 Again, that's, that's off the current enrollment. Um, it's the tuition rate of 11304 for next year, an increase of about $705 a student. So that's, uh, again, at the snapshot of, of what we have uh, anticipated for next year. Um, and you can see that the increase in, in enrollment at the high school level um, is an increase of $45,000 in tuition there. So what we'll do is we'll keep an eye on that for, for as long as we're developing our budget. If we know that people move in or move out, we'll adjust it accordingly. Um, but again, that's our that that's our snapshot in time of what we have right now. General supplies an increase of two thousand uh, dollars. We reflected back on the actuals the last few years and and uh, decided that that was under budgeted, so we increased that slightly. Um, general supplies reading. Uh, there were some new materials that were purchased for the new K-3 reading materials. Um, so that was increased. Yes? Okay. I just wanted to make a note on some of these supply lines. You're going to see how it's broken out by department, math, reading, etc. You're not going to see a lot of actuals for years prior because last year or for the current year's budget, we took the general supply line and broke it out by department to get more detail. You're not going to see those actuals in those lines. That's a good point. And that's also why some of you're, you're seeing some of the you know $200 increase, $300 decrease because it, it was all lumped in before, and, and now we're splitting it out so it's a little more detailed for way to see. Um, down a little bit further, further classroom reference books, a decrease of $3,800. That was a need last year, and it was purchased, in, and it wasn't a need this year, so that was a, a reduction that we And software licenses. Uh, you can see it's, it's up slightly, um, $5,000. Um, obviously, an adjustment that was, was necessary in that area. On page two, technology new equipment. Um, and I'm going to couple this with technology replace equipment right below that. The new equipment, we've had some purchases over the last couple of years, so we're, we're in pretty good shape with new equipment, but we're getting into a replacement cycle. So uh, if, if, we, if we're accurate with our replacement cycle, you're going to see the new equipment go down and the replacement equipment go up. So we'll just get into a, 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 a place where we're not um, you know, taking these big hits every four or five years, getting into a nice replacement cycle. So Quick question. I'm sorry. No. Yes. That equipment is all purchased. That's not leased. Right. That's right. I, have a, I like the software and the hardware and stuff. Is that specific just to the Rollins for school district, or is there a lot? Is it considered at a volume level for the whole SAU, and everybody gets a better deal because there's more money involved with the vendor? Um, right now, I believe it's purchased separately, but that's certainly something that we might be able to explore with Back Bay because Back Bay works with uh, some of the as well. So okay. if we don't in advance, we may be able to do some kind of cost savings. <coughs> Um, going down through, again, you can see some detail, uh, some, some slight increases in, de uh, in decreases, but most of those are simply from breaking it out and, and not being lumped together into one pool of expenses. And the music, the new equipment music uh, increase with that in the teacher this year, and there are some new instruments that are needed there. So, any questions on that area? Moving down to the next section is special education. Um, again, special education is, is, is what we know. It's the snapshot right now, anticipating what we're going to have next year. Um, I know Nancy has spent a great deal of time trying to detail out not only staffing, but student needs and transportation and all of those for, for uh, special education. So you can see the corresponding, and you know, we've had some decreases in, in salaries and benefits because of staff changes. Um, Health insurance, about almost to the bottom of the page, you'll see a, a decrease in middle school 
uh, special education tuition, but right underneath that, an increase of high school special education tuition. So we've got students that are moving on, obviously, need to budget appropriate. And those lines include both the base tuition for our <coughs> special ed students to Marshwood, as well as the services that they receive over in Marshwood. And, and you'll see in your enrollment section, there's a a la carte menu of the costs of each of those services for special ed. And isn't this one of the areas where, where uh, the school district has uh, created a, a special revenue fund to, to help with anything extraordinary? And if so, can you, can you tell us what the balance is? I'm sure it's here somewhere.
Moving down to page three, uh, in, in the middle you've got your, your guidance salaries and, and uh, the guidance program, and then down the bottom of the nurses program, you can see that those areas are fairly static. Page four, uh, speech services. You can see that there's a decrease in benefits. Again, our benefit plans will fluctuate depending on what plans people take and, and, and the, the, whether we have new staff or not, so that's, that's one of the fluctuations. Uh, adaptive PE, about halfway down the page, we've reduced that to $2,500. That's one of those areas, uh, it was two years ago that we had, I think it was $20,000 in, uh, and it wasn't utilized, and it was probably budgeted uh, in, in the wrong area. So we moved some of that money to other areas that were needed and reduced this number, figuring that this is something that we can take care of for $2,500. So we adjusted that accordingly. Down the bottom of the page, librarian services. Um, Again, we've got a benefit change there for uh, working that value. Back it up to testing. Are you going to spend any money on testing this year? For next year, too. Under testing, under testing services, yes. we've got we've got fifteen hundred dollars, five hundred for association dues, and then we got SLC dues in there for twenty two hundred dollars. So we do have forty two hundred dollars. Yeah, no, are you going to use it? We don't know. Okay. It's one of those situations where um, specialized testing needs to happen for specific students, and that's the line that it would come out of. Um, and last year, we just didn't happen to have any special. Yeah, that's what I, I mentioned at the school board. Yeah, that's fine. Well, Thank you. Sure. On the library services, is that getting tied to our library downtown, or is this a separate library? This is the media specialist here in this building. This is the school library. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a school library. Do they have an actual library here, or do they? Because I see them walking down the street all the time to the library. So that's different than this. Yeah. Okay. On page five, we've got school board services, school board dues. Really not much until you get down to the bottom. Uh, legal fees, we, we reduced that. We were carrying $15,000. We didn't know whether there was going to be additional uh, legal needed for either the withdrawal study or negotiations, and, and we really haven't seen an uptick in the legal fees for that. So uh, we felt comfortable reducing that by $75. Page six, the SAU assessment you can see is in there, and that's the page that was passed by the SAU budget this past week, so that is an actual number now. Uh, there's a slight increase in that. There were two staff members, one a IT data position and a secretary <coughs> position that was added to, to that budget. Underneath that, you've got school administration. Slight changes in there with uh, substitute salaries, clerical being a decrease, uh, your principal salary by contract, um, and adjustments with health insurance. And then down the bottom, those are some adjustments that we made because we looked back at the, at the three year actuals and decided that we needed to adjust those accordingly. So you can see the last uh, postage, printing, travel, all of those we, we adjusted them to what we thought was a better reflection. Down the bottom, custodial services. You can see an increase of $8,000. Uh, the majority of that is increased hours from for a part-time custodian, so that was an increase in the need. Um, you can see the corresponding benefits there and on the next page. Quick uh, question if I get on that. Custodial services, it says, Hundred seven thousand it goes down to eight thousand. Now obviously there's a budget difference there. But are we paying hundred and seven thousand dollars for consulting service in two thousand eight? This is one of the areas that I'm 
that. So I talked about where we um, broke it out. So we also have a facilities director as well, who works as a custodian as well. So he was in that line of the 107 at that in that year. We've now broken his out separately. So that's why. So you'll see um, the facilities director salary. You see, in, um, a little bit below that 107 was zero in that year, and now it's at 57. So we broke those two areas out. So it all used to be lumped in under custodial salaries, and now custodial and facility director is broken out. Okay. So facility is getting how much facility? Facility manager. It's getting how much in salary? Yeah. So his is the 59,135. See it under the proposed. Yeah. And then the 61 above that is the, the custodian staff. How many staff members? We have one, one full time. There's a part time proposed in here, and then there's summer as well. So that's summer. broken out. Yeah. yeah. Now I, I fully get what a custodian does because I paid my way through college. Didn't I also have a good idea what a custodian manager does because that's what I moved out to. Why do we have a custodian manager in this? It's one building. He's really the facilities manager. He's, um, <coughs> if you remember, um, there, there were a number of things. We had studies done, three or four studies done on this building. Um, and, and a number of years ago, we even talked about what we would do with the plate fix everything all at once. Yeah, $10 million, and, dollars, I remember. And one of our uh, solutions when, when we decided it was best not to do that for the cost uh, to the town uh, was to get a facilities manager who really understood how some of these old systems worked in the building and, and they could start bringing them along uh, and, and getting them up to, up to snuff, getting them, getting them uh, regularly um, uh, uh, maintained, all those things going on. So, he is a full-time custodian and pretty much a full-time facilities director. He does he does all that work. Managing the physical client. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, is he boiler certified and all of that stuff as well? I don't know all of his certifications. I do know that he has um, done some uh, what some of us would consider miracles. We really thought five years ago we would have to replace our boiler system. He now tells us that same system we thought we had to replace will last at least another five years because of the work he was able to do on it. So, does he also have an EPA certification? For like I don't know the certifications. He does have some. I don't know what they are. Because I know when they were painting up here, they weren't following the late safe procedures. And I know that because I have to have that in order to work on my own project. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't that know. may be something that's required for all schools. Can we keep this to budgetary issues? I mean, I think there are governance issues like that, or questions like that. I'm just curious why we're spending so much money on the public that hasn't radically changed. That's, that's one question. Yes, and it's to, keep it, it's to keep it really operational and actually improve it. I'm trying to say improve since, since you started here. Thank you. Moving along on page seven. Again, uh, that's the end of the custodial area. Um, you can see a thirty-nine hundred dollar decrease. That was custodial equipment replacement from last year. Uh, we don't need that much for this year. We've got one vacuum cleaner to leave, um, and uh, that's the reduction there. Um, I have a we, question on that. Yeah. <coughs> okay, on the custodial equipment, you've got the lawnmower for five thousand, and the blackboards for three thousand. On page 11 of your first presentation, it's 3,500 for that. It's 500. It's 500. Right yes, 500, and it's 3,500 on page 11 of this section. It's 500 and 3,000, so that's 3,500. Yes, but the other one's 35 and 5. Page 11 of this section, the first section. You show. Me Forty thousand. That's just a typo. Thank you. Okay. So which one is it? It's the thirty-five hundred. Thank you. While you're on that page of the narrative, I really appreciated that you called out all the major differences in the budget, both increases and decreases. It helped enormously because it's the first time I've reviewed the school budget in such detail. So my question had to do with um, the threshold for when it becomes a warrant article, a capital improvement, versus when you put it in the operating budget. Because there are um, increase, there are there's a list on page 
seven of the budget of 13 items. So things like the ventilation system, that was a $50,000 item, and the um, replacement of a pipe. Did you all have a conversation with that company and found out that it would cost about $40,000 to do that? So that was just an interesting placeholder that I yeah, saw. Yeah, and, and the, the, that's a good question. And, and the uh, $40,000 for the pipe replacement is up for the uh, water replacement. It's a placeholder. And we don't really know exactly what it's going to cost. But we know that work is going to be done sometime next year. Great. And so we wanted to make sure it was going to be for something. It's great that you were able to get that information before you put this budget together. And my, so, uh, that's terrific. But my question is, when do, do, does the capital improvement shift from the operating budget to a warrant work? Yes, and we don't have, we, we, we've never put a, um, a, a dollar figure on what's going to be capital or what's going to go into uh, the budget. Uh, capital, we've just really started having sort of a capital plan for the building and, and thanks to our facilities director, it's going to be, you know, another year it's going to look an awful lot, each year it gets a little better and better. And we have started building up our capital uh, building trust fund um, because we know there are some big ticket items uh, down the road. So what goes on a warrant and what doesn't, so we kind of look at this, we, we, we know that the RGS portion of the budget is down, even with these items in here. And so we decided to, um, to, to leave them there and, and not make warrants out of any of those pieces. Thanks. So on that page, on page 7, you'll see also the under utilities, water and sewer. Uh, we did increase that $2,200 because we we're, we're anticipating um, We, we increase that as well. Uh, and some other adjustments, uh, $1,000 in oil, just done in past usage. Uh, and then halfway down the page, ground maintenance, you can see, you can see there that uh, you know, we've got some things for the playground, wood chips, landscape soil, um, and that's our placeholder for the, for the, if the water and sewer pipe has to be changed from the road and dug up and the whole thing. Good question on that. Are you going to be able to fund that if it's done this year? Well, I guess that's a question. I mean, it's, it's certainly not going to be an easy funding. Uh, it, 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 will, it will be a, a challenge. And your budget, your, your new budget year begins when? July 1st. July 1st. Oh. Uh, we do have emergency funds available if we need them, but um, because water is very important. <laughs> so, so I mean, you know, we, but we just don't, we, we can't predict if we'll have the money in this year's funds. Now, going down to maintenance repairs, uh, just to spend a couple minutes on that. You can see that, uh, you know, we've got uh, detailed plans of the ventilation system. We know the ventilation of the building is, is, is aged. Uh, and, and we're hoping that through getting detailed plans, not only be ready for uh, switching it over, but be more efficient and have more air, air flow in the building and volume as well. So that's, that's part of it. The general building maintenance overall is ongoing. The stair, the stair treads and the, and the entrances for the gym, you can see that, that they've done a wonderful job at resurfacing this area in the gym. It, it looks fantastic. Uh, the tile, and the, if you haven't been in the supper hallway, in the hallway down towards the annex, and downstairs, it, it's fantastic. Uh, not only does it look a lot better, but the day-to-day -day maintenance is a lot easier, and the durability uh, and cleanliness is much easier as well. So that's a, certainly a, a wonderful step in the right direction. And you can see, I'm not going to read all of those to you, but you, you can see some things that are the magnetic clocks for safety and security, and, and making sure that we can secure the building in different areas of the building, smoke detectors, self-explanatory. Uh, Are those replacement or just? It, it's, it's replacement in addition okay. of smoke detectors. So it's, uh, it, it's 
replacing ones that, that may be antiquated and at the same time adding to certain areas of the building as well. Are you adding um, carbon monoxide ones as well at the same time? Uh, we haven't, I'm not sure. I'd have to, yeah, I'm not sure if they looked at that. I'm not sure either. They often come as a, as, as a, as a combo. Yeah. So we're not sure. But the board, the board was actually very supportive of getting those uh, smoke detectors in. Um, at, at the moment, there are classrooms with no smoke detectors. And that's legally all right, apparently, uh, because the, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the um, sprinkler system, they say, will act as it. But it takes a lot longer for uh, the heat to, or smoke here to, to get, it doesn't detect smoke. It only detects heat. So the school board is very uh, uh, in favor of getting that done as quickly as possible. The, so the detailed plan for ventilation, that's just a study. That's not to solve the problem. Correct. Can you um, explain a little bit about the uh, internal doors for the NS hallway? Yeah, I can do that. Sorry, I'm going to check on the question about carbon monoxide. Mm -hmm. I looked in our list and it doesn't designate whether there's smoke. Um, so the um, internal doors for the annex hallway, one of the things that we've talked about is safe and secure entrance. Um, and uh, the board did a study and got some quotes last year uh, that were um, pretty high. And one of the things that we've talked about internally is separating parts of the building so that um, community can use the building but not have access to the full building um, if it's not necessary. Um, so one of the things we've talked about doing is putting doors to separate the classrooms from the rest of the building in the annex hallway um, so that there's you know, no access to that level of hallway. The bathrooms will still be available in the gym if the community decides to come in and use the facility. And then the other piece that um, we've talked about is replacing doors in the gymnasium. Um, I'm not sure how old these doors are, but they're probably original. <laughs> uh, but we've talked about um, these doors specifically and being able to secure those as well um, so that there's no access to the main building if this is the only area that's being requested for use. Um, if there's classrooms that are being asked for use, then those doors will be adjusted and unlocked um, if we can do that to computer access similar to the outside doors. So that wouldn't mean while school is in use with children? No. Only after hours? Yeah. Um, and what's the question here? That's access by a card reader? Or how would you access? I mean, is it just going electronically by reader, or how do you access? Well, if it's during the school day, then they're going to be on So much, correct. Yeah. If they're locked, say, for example, in the evening for community use or on the weekend for community use, then they're locked, meaning people from the outside community won't have a card to read into the rest of the building. Right. And we would either unlock the doors manually for the community members to come in and out, or we'd have staff on the weekends here um, that would have them unlocked for people to come in and out. At uh, what level, like the study was $50,000, go out for a bid on that, I assume? We'd have to, yes. Okay. Just to note, too, these are all in prioritized order as well, from 1 to 13. So, and then down to the bottom of page 7, uh, there are a number of, of uh, maintenance agreements and testing that we need to do annually to make sure that everything is, is safe along the way, so we can see those. And on page 8, moving into transportation, um, you can see that there's a slight increase in, in the areas of transportation. This is based on your uh, first year contract. Uh, next, this budget year, next year, is our last year of the contract, so we'll be going out to bid next year for a, a new contract. So this will be our last year. And, so the, 
the first one, transportation regular, is just the buses for the, the, the school here. It's for the school here and for the kids to go to Marshall. It's just regular students. Up below the special ed transportation, which is sometimes the smaller buses for the specialized transportation for special ed students. Right now, I was looking at the transportation regular. The first one. Yeah. The, the first one. So, right, the, the first, one. yes, I'm sorry. The first one is for the elementary school, and then the two is broken okay, up by that's the school time. Yes. And then how many students do we have for buses for the grammar school here? Again, on buses. How many students? How many bus riders? Yeah. I don't know. Off the top of my head, I don't have to get that point. Sure. Sure. Part of the challenge in New Hampshire and any of the districts is not only the number of riders, but the distance that they have to, have to cover. Right. Um, there are many districts in New Hampshire that, you know, from time to time, we'll have people say, well, there's, the buses are only half full. Uh, but if you fill the buses, you have to go, you'll have kids on the bus for an hour and a half or you know, two hours in the morning, which is certainly not appropriate. So that's always the balancing act of trying to get, you know, full buses and utilize them as well as we can and not have routes that are over 45 minutes or 50 minutes. That's not really an issue with Rollins, but it's small. It's only about three miles across the country. It's not like people would go to Cage. It, it's not as bad an issue, you're absolutely right. Um, but when you're, when you're picking up kids and going up and down the streets and things, it does add up time. Yeah, the reason I asked was I know I looked at the 2015 study. They had a very useful map that just showed the distribution of students. It showed the grammar school, the high school. And I mean, and as expected, it was a very heavy concentration like, right down in here. And I know I live on the other side of town. I see the big bus come by with one person. So I understand that's the cost of one person, 50 people on that bus, too. But it just seemed that such a concentration of students so close to the school already, yet a, very, yet a, a bus transportation, and I guess you've got to do whatever first student says in a charge, but the transportation charges seem to be fairly high given the fact that most of the students are really located probably within the school. So, just that I don't know if you have an answer for it, but I mean, it is, it is something that just is an interesting point. What's our requirement? Like, we must provide transportation for students that are in our school. Is that what you're saying? I believe it's K. K through eight? Yes. So, is that regardless of their distance from the school, or is there a... Well, there's a mileage distance. That you get. I mean, every district usually sets a mileage for walking and things, and usually it depends on a number of things, not only the, the distance, but, you know, are the streets safe, do you have sidewalks, right. it, you know, those types of things, if you, if you want children walking, and then we get to this time of year, and the roads start shrinking, so, right. uh, you know, that's a, usually a local decision. And, and the, other, the other thing that affects the, our, the cost is that we do go out to bid once our contract is up, uh, there are a number of times during my tenure on the board, and there is not a lot of competition. We, uh, we usually get one. We just went out to bid and some was working, I had one response. And, and it's for students. So we don't get a lot of choice of how we can uh, uh, transport our students. Um, question. I don't see anything in here on the uh, I've varying rumors about the cost of sending the six graders who were supposed to go over across the river. Um, what is the cost on that? I hear ridiculous figures or small figures? What's the plan there? Well, that's a great question. If, if I can hold that question for about five minutes, I'll finish this and then we'll go on to the more articles and I'll address that. So finishing off page eight, you'll see special ed transportation there as well. And, and again, that's solely based on need. Um, you can see the middle school is up and the high school is down. Uh, but we, we take the, the need that's uh, from the special ed students and handle that accordingly. Um,
for parents that have students that have a negative balance at the end of the year that they have to pay for their lunches, or our revenue doesn't come in, the district has to make that whole. So I increased that by three thousand dollars. Just seeing the history over the last few years, you know, it's been twelve. Some year, you know, eighteen, nineteen, it was twenty thousand we had to supplement. So I did increase that to fifteen thousand just to give it a little extra. And then the last one is the reduction of the ninety-seven thousand. That was the transfer that was made for the war articles for last year. For the, that went into the trust funds. But it's added into the budget, right? Yes. Once the war articles pass, it gets added into the budget. Okay. So then, if the seven and eight pass this year, then there will be ninety-eight thousand more in this budget for the next year's budget. Because you got seven and eight articles. Yes. Yes. Just like any of Warren articles, those would yeah. all get added. To the but I thought it was no impact on tax. There isn't because you're, you're, then you'd have a revenue piece that comes in to offset it because you'd have revenue coming from your end fund balance to offset that, so it would have zero impact. Okay, so um, it's private in service that does your cafeteria now, correct? Yes, cafe service. Cafe services. So they set the pricing. They set. They set all of that. The board sets the pricing, oh, so okay. we're required by law to increase the prices every year by at least 10 cents okay. because we're not supposed to get reimbursed for the free students. We have free students who qualify for free lunch. Mm -hmm. We get reimbursement from the state for that, and we're supposed to be charging as much for our paid lunches as we get reimbursed for by the state. However, we don't like to impact families as much as we can, so we do the minimum every year of 10 cents to try to get that money, that paid lunch, up to that price. So the board sets those every year. So if you have students or families that are behind on their food uh, purchases, who goes after it? Is it the school? Well, or there's a couple of different yeah. policy on it. Um, the first step is cafe services. They do the first initial thing. We have alert now when we have that roll call that goes out. So that lets parents know that they have a negative balance. If they get over $50, it comes to our office. Bob signs numerous <laughs> letters every month that we send out saying, you know, we'll help you, we'll set up a payment plan, just contact us, we'll help you out. But again, if they don't pay, we have to make it whole. That's just the law. Okay. And we also feel strongly as a school district that we don't want any student going hungry. Yeah. We, we feel very strong. It's in our ball. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. And we do get donations occasionally from businesses and, and you know, anonymous donors that do donate money towards people's negative. And you don't have a lot of participation here, too. That plays a factor, too, in your food service program because you don't, kids don't participate a lot, too, so your revenue isn't coming in for that project as well. Did you continually go after the money or after the year you just say, okay, we continually go after all year long? The policy is the state requires you to put in an end date so that they're going to keep going, so the policy ends from the year that that debt becomes the school district's. We never shut anyone down. We never shut anybody down. No, we do have some things where they're only allowed to charge a reimbursable meal. So if there were things, I don't know if you guys do the a la carte items so much here, but at the middle and high school level, they might have a bag of chips or you know something a la carte that's not a reimbursable meal. We do shut that off. Mm -hmm. We will only give them a reimbursable meal. And I will add that, that our staff is very aware. Of, we have an incredible staff, and they keep an eye and they, they make sure that the children are going. So with that, we're, we're on the last page, on, on page 9. Uh, you'll see that this is a decrease in the budget of $30,812. Um, that to, to put in the next two sections with, it splits it out with the, with the uh, Rollinson grade school and the high school. I'm not going to go over each individual budget because you, they're included in this, but just to point out that Rollinsford grade school budget is down 66902 uh, and the middle school and high school budget is up 36,090. So, you know, our, our, our enrollment and tuition affects that, and that, that's, uh, that's an increase there. But uh, that's one of the challenges of our, of our budget is every, every penny we take out of our budget basically comes out of Rollins for grade school. Because it's very, I mean, our tuition is set for middle school and high school by students. So. Um, that's where we're at, uh, and 
We had a question on the Warren articles. If we can switch to the Warren article page, I'll those. I'll start with uh, Warren Article 5. That's your, that's your proposed school budget. We put the present numbers in there, obviously, that are accurate to whatever we end up with. Uh, first number is your proposed budget, and the second number is the default budget. As it stands right now, the default is uh, about $83,000 less than the proposed budget. I just thought, because I've been confused by this, I know, I'm not sure, Emily, if you had brought this up, but there was like the transfer of like 300000 from the school back to the town, correct? And that was for whatever those reasons. So while the proposed budget, I'm sorry, the, the proposed budget for last year is what it is, when we're doing a comparison between them, it's really, it's really the proposed budget less 300000 is really the increase from last year's proposed budget to a future proposed budget. Right? Well, so, well, 380, I think you mean the actual. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. well, it might have well, left over last year, right? right. So, I, I believe you mean the actuals yes. from the 1819 budget mm -hmm. compared to the proposed. 
And again, that one will have no tax impact because that only happens if we have money left over at the end of this year to transfer it. Right. Article 8 uh, is your building permit capital reserve. Uh, excuse me. Again, try and build that up for if there's being in ventilation, roofs, anything like that that, that needs, to be, needs to be done for a big ticket item. Uh, Article 9 is the question on withdrawing from SA 56. Uh, again, I'm going to the State Board of Education tomorrow. Uh, if it's approved tomorrow, then it will then go on more in our um, for consideration. Can you just, I think, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about how it's going to work, because there is now a, um, you're going to be rent SAU staff, so to say. Correct? Correct. <laughs> 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 does it very well. But yes, uh, we have actually already worked with, uh, with the Summersworth Board and we have a contract for services already approved by both boards, by the Rawls uh, School Board and by the Summersworth School Board, that we can indeed contract, rent the services of, of the people at this team. But you lose your voice. Yes. Now, in, 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 we never had a majority voice anyway. I understand that, but they did listen to us. Yes, 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 yes. Um, yes, they did. And it was not our choice to start this action. It was, it was someone's worth choice, and we really were left with, with, with no choice. And, um, and, and we as a school board and the withdrawal committee, Joseph uh, on, the, on the withdrawal committee, uh, we checked out all of the options that were available, just having our own, hiring our own separate, Superintendent, um, business administrator, special education um, coordinator, all, all those positions, and we looked at the cost, the time it would take to set them up, where they, you know, where, where we could house them. We looked at all those different things, and the best option was indeed uh, price-wise, and, and in pretty much every other way, to try to continue to get the services from people that we have come to know and um, and trust, and it meant that our budget wouldn't change, wouldn't change. It, it would be just the same as if, as, as if we had never withdrawn, in essence. Our, our budget would remain as, as if we right. It's the same formula. Yeah. Yeah. You're using exactly, exactly the same thing. Same. But, you don't, but you don't have a say on the budget for the SIU. Support or deny. That's, that, that's the only thing that I'm trying That is correct. Yeah. But, we, but, but the Summers Worth Board, uh, one of the provisions we put into the contract was that we can indeed, we, we can withdraw uh, at pretty much, we can withdraw pretty much any year we want to. The, the budget will be presented to us in time for us to, if we decide to, to end the contract without without any penalties. The thing is, though, you would, you would have to pay so much more to go somewhere else and, or have your own staff doing that. So, I mean, I guess that's a, it's a, it's a win for you guys to be able to well, not really, because the control is really, we're just a percentage of the SAU budget. Correct. So if they're going to say, well, why don't we just double it, I think they'll have, they'll have the summer's worth people yeah. come in and say, what do you need to do double it? So, right. so that's I mean, there's a little bit of a balance yeah. and yeah. control in there with that. But withdrawing, though, is, Ridic yeah, would be outrageously yes. pricey for that, too. And, well, and we also, as citizens, come to the because we're still part of the SAU. So if we want um, to technically, we can't? Well, you could be public comments. Right, right. That's what okay. I mean. It's, it's public comment, right? Mm -hmm. As part of the SAU dis the district, so. right? Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. The positive aspect of this, it, it, and there are positives to this, um, a little bit of history lesson <coughs> first, though. I mean, Summers would did start the process, uh, and if it if it was kind of left to Summersworth and Summersworth were to pull out, then Rollinsburg would very much be in reaction mode. Um, that you would you would have SAU 56, uh, and obviously have to drastically and dramatically readjust what that looks like. Uh, so pulling out now you're not reacting, you're you're taking control of that. The withdrawal committee did look at. Uh, I think we sent letters to 15 different SAUs in the area. We got a lot of prices, Marshwood, Dover, uh, Wisdom River, Portsmouth, a number of different areas. Uh, and yes, some of them were very pricey. Um, but it does allow you the autonomy in the future to make that decision. 
now it might not be, I mean, this is, this is really a good, easy step uh, to take. Two years from now, five years from now, who knows what might change, and you might decide to take a different habit. Uh, so it does give you that kind of autonomy at any particular time. And I think that that's the, ultimately that's the trump card because you are paying for 16% of that budget. So, um, you know, I don't think it's a situation where um, you're giving up anything. So that's Article 9. Um, so the question of, of Grade 6, that's a, a, an ongoing, that was a petition warrant article last year to, to uh, research and, and look at all of the possibilities for that. The board did that, um, had a community forum, followed through on all of the, uh, the research, uh, and uh, I'll let Judy speak to it a little bit about timing as it pertains to right now. And then I'll get into the cost factor. Okay, and, and the cost factor will, it will, will you'll see where it hit me, it'll hit nicely at the end there. Um, so the school board had an, an excellent uh, conversation at our last school board meeting last week about what to do um, in terms of, we, we, we've done, based on the warrant article from last year, we did the research, uh, we had a, a, a good meeting, a very good turnout for that meeting as well. So we had a good meeting on, on, um, and, the, uh, and we talked a lot, of, we had the educators from Marshall, we had educators from here come in and talk to the public and answer questions. So for me, it came down to this, that there are three elements involved in my decision making and thinking about how, whether or not it's time to send our sixth graders to Marshall. And they are um, the educational value of whether K through six or six through eight, uh, a facility need or a space need that we might have here that we could open up by sending the sixth grade over there, and then how much it would cost. So those are the three basic elements um, that I base my thinking on. And what we learned from the public forum with the educators involved is that with education, you can find support for either one. K through six is excellent for a lot of kids. Six through eight is excellent for a lot of kids. Every educator on the panel said there is no bad choice. So, so we're not compelled, it's not, it's not a greater educational value necessarily to send them there. So, so that, didn't, that, that didn't weigh either way. We don't at the moment have a need. We don't have a space need or a facilities need that would really require us to send students um, out of town at this time. But then there's the cost. So what's the cost to the town? And the cost, uh, Dr. Gronsky uh, and, his, and, 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 uh, and uh, Kate did a great job coming up with the cost, and uh, we'll, we'll do the figure in just a moment. But in my mind, it's, it's probably something we don't necessarily want to take on that cost right now, because once we start that cost, it will never leave our budget. You know, there will be a time, maybe, maybe in the future, when we have to send our kids over there. But if, but if we don't, then we're going to save a great deal of money each year by not sending them over. And um, I'll, uh, I, I can give you the bottom line, or do you want to just uh, run through the line? Uh, the bottom line, and then uh, Dr. Gadowski, if you go into the details on it, is $326,000, um, a little bit more than that, than $326,000. So, um, how many students? Uh, I believe 20, 20, 27. 26 or 27. Yeah. How are how we arrived at the, at the number is uh, we, we took the number of current students that would, fifth grade students that would be moving up. We've already had at least two parents of students that do not go to an elementary grade school that said that they would send their kids to Marshall. So we added those students and two more on that. So we've got 27 students at the tuition rate. Uh, we've got the, we took the known special education needs uh, of our students and, and put that number in. Uh, so the tuition was 305,000 and the tuition was about 58,000. So tuition itself is 363,521. So then we looked at other additional costs that we might need and we, we thought that we needed to be responsible in adding a bus, so that's $71,000. We wanted to make sure that, remember, anything that we, we 
don't fund with this. If we get a wrong number on this, we have to make it up out of our own for a great school budget. So we want to make sure that we get a, an accurate number on this. We looked at any reductions that we could by sending students out. Uh, we, we calculated that we could reduce one classroom teacher. Uh, with salary and benefits, it's about 88000 and one paraprofessional, $20,000. So we took $108,000 off that figure um, because we thought that that was a, a reasonable reduction that we could cover out of our budget. So as Judy said, the final figure that we came up with was $326,650. So you know, that, that's the amount that would not only go into the budget for this year, but uh, if they were to go, it would be that number or close to it um, for as long as the students are there. Now there has been some discussion about uh, it, 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 would it be a wash because the per pupil's uh, cost of, of rolling through grade school and then you take those students out, um, it's not a straight wash. So if you take the, and I'm not quite sure what the per pupil, let me just say $14,000 or $15,000 per per pupil. If you have 20 students that leave, it's not 20 times $15,000. The only reduction would be, as we said, one teacher and one pair. You still have the building, you still have the supplies, you still have administration, you still have everything else that needs to go into it. So it's not a straight $15,000 a, a student follows down. I know some people are kind of calculating that and saying, we can save money. It really is not work that way. I'm not seeing your numbers. We're spending twenty-two thousand a year to send kids to Romsford Grade School, and it's eleven five over there. I, I don't see how you get up. And as far as the buses, those students are still coming to this school here. You have the same number of buses you would have if they had the kids here or over there. I did the contact for a student, and they said they would have to add a bus for that group to go to Romsford. Would they have to add a bus now if you had the same kids here? No, at, at the moment we run uh, three buses to the grade school. Well, and, I see them here every day. And with this change of 22 of, of 25 students, we would also have to run three buses to Marshwood. So they can't. The bus company has told us a number of times that they need three bu buses in Marshwood for time more than the number of students on them. And then, so then we would have to add a bus to go to Marshwood. So that's why the bus costs. Because we asked that question, because we, we were like, do we need to add a bus? And, and we asked the bus company what they thought, and you know, they ran the numbers and the times and the bus routes and everything else, and we thought that was the response we needed to do. You're already running three and the same number of kids to the school now, correct? Theoretically, that you would have now. You're already running three buses here, correct? To Rawlsford Grade School, correct. correct. So if the 27 kids that were going a couple miles across the bridge, mm -hmm. were on the bus and didn't get off. They're, they're not the same. Uh, <laughs> so so in, order, in order to run two buses, we have three buses that, uh, that they're, se they're separate runs. We don't, because of the timing, they're separate runs for the buses. So it's essentially we see a, a five buses doing bus runs around Lawrence. Even if you figure the 71,000, you're talking half the cost to send the students over there versus here. Well, that, I, I that, don't see how that can come that, It's not entirely, unfortunately, I mean, I, I don't know where you're getting the 22000 from, but don't forget, if you are, I, um, that does not include the 11000 almost eleven, almost uh, um, 1200 well, now, yeah. over there, uh, 12000 uh, 12, almost now over there. That does not include any special ed costs. It does not include transportation. It does not include um, administrative services. So there's a number of services that are sort of built into the RGS costs that really cover those students as well, that we have to pay regardless. Let me, let me give you this as an example. If five students move into Rollins for a grade school, right now, it costs you zero dollars. They can go in, they can go into the classrooms. Um, let's say there were two in the first grade and three in the second grade, and they would go into the classrooms, it would not increase your budget of dime. If five students move into high school, that would cost you fifty-five thousand dollars. 
but they're going to go to high school whether they go here or Summersworth or someplace else. That's but that's the difference between a, 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 a you know you're, you're talking out of some oranges. You're a tuition community for high school and middle school. If you weren't a tuition community, five students moving into high school would cost you nothing. Not the first that's the, that's the difference. You know, wouldn't have to hire yeah. anybody, we wouldn't have to keep the lights on more, we right. wouldn't have to heat the lights And building. even, let me take that one step further, if 15 students moved into Rollins for grade school, if they were spread out in class, I mean, obviously not if they were all, <laughs> all in the fourth grade, but if they were spread out kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, and we spread them out, theoretically, they could cost you zero dollars. If 15 students moved into high school, um, you're talking $160,000. I mean, that's just, that's the nature of the tuition aspect. I don't see it. I don't but see it. Not in respect, though, it could affect it the other way, too, losing 15. It could. Yes. 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 If, right. if, if, yes. Most you're of the right. time it goes up, and I'm with experience. Well, I let me use that scenario. Yeah. If five kids move out of high school, then you save $55,000. If five kids move out of Rollins for grade school, yeah. you save zero. <laughs> 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 All right. So, so the, the school board, what, part of the school board discussion um, on Thursday, and we are still discussing it, is that now that we've done the research that was asked for on the last, um, with the last petition one, we are, what we are discussing is, is whether or not we put a warrant article, sort of a factual uh, warrant article on, um, on, on, the, on, on the ballot that lays out the true costs of doing this, and, and then simply also state that we do not recommend doing this because the cost, we feel that the total cost is, uh, is warranted at this time. But you know, a way to get the facts in front of the public as to this is how much it costs, and, and to show that we've done the diligence of doing it, so it, it becomes a factual type warrant. This is what can be done, this is what it will cost, but that we don't necessarily um, um, recommend it. What percentage, what percentage of the town budget does the school take up? The total budget for the town? Yeah, it takes up um, about 70%, I think. I, I haven't done the, I don't know, the, I haven't done the math, but it's 16, 17 percent. So this is the biggest cost factor. No doubt about it. Absolutely. So when you cut tuition for 27 kids in half, that's a tough one to argue, especially when they're only going to be here one more year no matter what you do. That's a tough sell. But, you, but yeah. it's going to cost us more know, money no, no, to do what you're asking for. I understand. Yeah. I understand how you put it across. Yeah. I understand what you're doing with that. It's not a straight ratio. Yeah. Bob, I, maybe not. I, I mean, I understand how they explain it. I don't know if you've seen exactly how it's not a straight $40,000 for student cost. It's kind of a shell game. I think it's a good example to say when you think about the Warren articles, for it, which probably makes sense and everybody can do it, to have as much facts as decision. possible to lay it out. I think, I think on both sides, it's an example of the reason to, to put some real clear black and white facts out there. I just, I just have a couple quick questions. Um, Seven hundred dollars that went out per student this past year, so it's roughly six point six percent. Is that about average for the year? It is not. It's the largest raise that we have had. It's, it's almost double the last um, tuition increase. But, but they do. A, they're using the same formula they've always used, okay. and it's based on the number of students and the rolls for students count into the number of students. Um, they take out any of their transportation costs, they take out any state reimbursed aid they get from uh, the state of Maine, um, or for any bond or anything they have with that. And it, it's, it's the same formula they've used all along. It's simply that their student population has dropped in Marshall. Oh. And that, that makes the difference. 
In your, yeah, in your enrollment tab, there's a the breakout of how they calculate it. Okay. Yeah. And then, Bob, uh, I believe on the uh, board goals, I don't know, one of the, no, I think it's got a side track, we've got a couple of the pair of the uh, negotiations? Yeah, uh, yeah. I touched on that briefly. Okay, I didn't know if you wanted to cover it. I didn't know if it was purpose why you went one, two, and then get three. Oh, I thought I did three. Uh, negotiations, they're, they're in the process, the board and the union uh, is in, are in the process of negotiations right now. Um, they've had five sessions or so. Um, we're hopeful that we're coming down the home stretch, but um, you know, if there's a an agreement prior to the deadline for the Warren articles, then it then it will be on the Warren articles. Okay. I think we just we got we talked one and two, we got some other sides and we went and I don't know that was part of your You're coming back. It's know. in process, they're working on it. <laughs> got it. Any other questions of Dr. Gomsky and the panel? Okay, thank you. Transition itself, and 
you know, that, that in itself, you're going to, when you start talking about the sixth grade, you're going to have some young sixth graders that that transition might be even more difficult. So it, it's a, yeah, we've, we've heard that. And it's certainly something that we're looking at to try to address anybody's concerns. I will say, too, if you're interested in, in kind of what the parental discussion has been around this and you're on Facebook, there was a really good conversation on the Rollins for, <laughs> the Rollins for New Hampshire Happenings page. It was really balanced. And, um, there were a lot of really long, well-thought-out comments, um, both for and against. It's just, I, I felt like it was a really good dialogue good. in that. Yeah, yeah, it is very unusual. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think that's a good question. I will say that every year uh, the board has seen uh, the, the administration here at this school make efforts to make the actual tr physical transition better and better. Uh, um, after the first year, there were changes in the math curriculum here um, and, and, then, and more time to going over, over there and see what the school was going to be like. And, and Martha Middle School has been very cooperative with that as well. So every year it gets better and better. And um, from the school board point of view, in September and October, parents come and they complain. Oh, my kid is struggling. Oh, they're doing homework. They, they, they're not getting any sleep. They're doing this, they're doing that. Then, then we don't hear from them ever again because, you know, the kid's name starts showing up on the honor roll and they, they adjust. And that's basically how it goes, right. pretty much every year. Right, I, pay, I try to pay attention, um, I don't know, kids in the school system, but like I said, neighbors and stuff. And they're very, you know, the ones that have now been there for four or five years are very comfortable, and they love the Marshall community, so I think it's a wink wink, obviously. You're producing some very well-rounded children out of Rollins Street Grade School, so kudos Perfect. to you. Any other questions? Yeah, I do too. What is, do we have the breakdown of, the, between the different schools, the special ed students? So there's 154 in the Rollins for grade students. How, I'm assuming the special ed students are part of that 154. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, don't mean, I don't care about the breakdown, but I'm curious about those. Do we know those numbers between RGS, the middle school, and the high school? You mean the percentage of students? No, just the number of students. So if there's 154 total students in RGS, how many of them are part of the special education program? We, we, we don't have it. Okay. That now. And then the other one was, and I guess it goes to the cost per student, and I, and I guess I would need an explanation on that, but if I take the budget that's in here for the total RGS, all of those things, you know, not the full district, but just RGS. And you look at that number and you divide it by 154, it is about 22,000. Is that, and that's the true cost, and if it's not, I'm assuming, because it seems awful high. It, yeah, and, and the reason, well, so in the RGS budget, you look at that, you can look at that piece of it there. In that is included, um, the SAU,
think it's off to the left, data and statistics or yeah. something. Like, if you get on there, they'll do the per pupils for, for everybody in the state. One of the things that you need to be careful with is read what they're excluding from that because you know, you've got transportation, you've got the SAU assessment, there's a number of things that are taken out and a lot of times people will do what you did, divide by the number of students and come up with $22,000 and they get on the DOE website and it might be at 15, 16, something like that, um, and say, well, what's the difference? Um, they exclude certain things out of it. But if you want to compare throughout the state, kind of apples to apples, um, that's, that's one place that you can do it. It is not uncommon for small communities for pupils to be higher than, you don't have the economy at scale. I, I can understand that. You know, you don't, you, you don't, you don't have that with your facility, but um, that's one way to get it. You got a question for Katie. Okay, you say that the operating budget, the tax impact is down 10 cents. Uh, I agree with that number, but I think it's actually going to be a lot higher. Because of all the money you gave back to the town, our taxes went down. So the tax rate went down $2.66 for the school. We're going to have to make that up, right, on this next budget, on the tax time. I'm basing it on the assessment yeah, I know. that I have. But well, we're not going to have all that money you gave back to us. We're going to have to make that up in the taxes. Am I wrong? You understand what I'm saying? No, so that, comes up, that, comes off, that comes off after, and it's, it's in addition to. So that, that reduce, it doesn't affect this tax rate. No, not this one. The one that's going to be in November. When you said it again, because well, when we, you said it again, I revise it for you. Yeah, right. So I, when you set, when you pass the budget, the town gets a sheet of yeah. what you pay for the. But town. you're not going to have that big lump of sum that you gave to the we town. We don't know that until June. Well, I don't think again. you're going to have a half a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the year, it's always adjusted. This is anything. always based on. Yeah, I know that. We know at this point. But I'm, what I'm saying is, not going to get down ten cents. Well, it's going to go up two dollars. It's estimated. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> No, I thank you for all the money you gave to back to the town, but it's have to come back and hurt us later, which is the way it works. Are you suggesting we don't give it back? No, 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 I'm just stating facts. You guys did a real good job doing that. I'm crediting you for that. But all I'm saying is it's going to come back and raise our taxes back up next year. Nothing. You've done everything perfect. And I like the way you present the budget. When there's a decrease, you explain why, and there's an increase, you explain why. A very well presentation. Any other questions? Dr. Gadowski? Thank you all very much. Thank you. Very well presented. Thanks. So normally I'm not the chair, uh, John O'Neill is our chair, but we're scheduled next uh, Wednesday, we, uh, it's been announced at PM, we're scheduled, scheduled next Wednesday to, 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 for the budget committee to review all three of the budgets that we are responsible for, the school, the town, and the water and sewer. And um, I don't know what else to call it, I'm sorry. Huh? So I'm the hesitant, yes. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so we're going to start at 6 o'clock next week. I don't, one of the things that I was going to request or uh, recommend of, of the committee is to bring our calendars next week in case we can't get through all three of these. But, but at the end of our process, we will know what budgets we will be bringing to the public hearing that the budget committee hosts in January all, for all three of our governmental entities. So I think the question is how, how will we be informed? Will we, will we expect Emily to bring this to us, or will we be informed if there are changes to our budget? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, Emily certainly will know. Um, we, it will take some time. Uh, I suspect, let's say that there are changes to like, the town budget. I suspect that the paperwork for that will come from the town. And so Denise will bring it back to the town administrator and she will prepare the materials. So the same thing will need to happen with 
with the school district. If, if there are changes and there's going to be a column with the school board recommended and the, and the budget committee recommended and they're different, we'll need to convey them to you. How, uh, I mean, John will take care of that, uh, maybe in concert with Emily, and uh, hopefully, you know, as soon as we know, we're hoping not too long after you will also <laughs> okay. Is that, is that fair? Yeah, that's fine. If there, are any, if there are any concerns or details, or if you want more information, just let us know. Me and have to do whatever we need. It, it might be helpful next Wednesday if somebody maybe was on the call in case there were particular <laughs> questions. I'm just thinking now. Mm -hmm. um, because what we don't want is to have, like, me as a budget committee member say, Katie, find, me, uh, find out this piece of information for me. And it's not easy, and it's going to take her time. And, you know, I'm not the budget committee. Right. So we're trying to really be careful about that. And so the next time we as a budget committee will be meeting is next Wednesday. But questions <laughs> may come up. And if, if we know that, you know, someone can be available. Yeah, I mean, hopefully I'll be able to answer the majority of them. And <coughs> If it's a if it's a detail like you know how many or what what you know yeah I I'm just thinking that I don't know, know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. but possibly the, the committee if they have questions before next they can get to Emily to try to get those answers yeah. before we meet on sure. Wednesday so yeah. yeah. or to get conversation or Katie yeah. email her directly as long as the other is again if we we're asking a question it's like I'm trying to what crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not from the budget committee, it's from just... Well, they have to know that it's from the individual, individual and not individual. as a representative unless it's, yeah. unless it's Emily or the chair asking for it and it's on behalf of the whole budget. Just like I said, I think it'd be best if they all went through Emily so that there's not overlap and double, double questioning. No, so it has to go through the chair. Call it. something about it. Yeah, yeah. If any questions come to it's not from the budget committee, it's from an individual member. Correct. So, right. But I, I agree, I think it... it Yes, yeah, for you. And the same as the board fielding them through me for the select board part of it. So. I just have one quick question. With regard to uh, enrollment projections, right? there's no science to it, per se, and you don't know who's going to move in. Uh, but as far as, can you project at all? Are we declining a little bit? I know a lot of it's schools a, are declining. It's an excellent question. <laughs> and, and, and Part of what I look at is our, our, kindergarten, our kindergarten class. Yeah. It is growing. We have 30 children in kindergarten. That is huge. That was a big jump uh, from the last few years. And if we, if we continue to see young families move into town, which is what's been happening, we're going to have a very full school, if, if indeed that happens. So <coughs> the reason, a lot of snow, maybe. <laughs> So, so while we can't predict, we have seen our kindergarten classes grow over the last two years, which is unusual in, in, in this area. Most, most are, are seeing uh, populations drop, including, especially in the lower grades. This is just additional color. It's not really factual. But the last time I looked at um, data like this at the state, one of the state levels, we were, at that time, had, one of, had a population that was older than the median, and and now we're starting. So I think what is happening kind of bears out is that maybe some of that of the older population is being replaced by younger kids who are already like older than and than the median in the state, which would mean that because maybe our transition is happening faster. Or we're right. transitioning. Oh, I think you also saw transition people moving around because they could go to Marshwood and not have to pay main state tax. In a smaller community, yes. either renting or Which buying. The reason the water 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 right. right. Yeah, so I think you saw a lot of that. Right. And, 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 well. and we've had some building mm -hmm. in town, too, so that is yeah. something that impacts it as well. And so it, it is difficult to predict, but the, the study that was done a couple of years ago, three years ago, maybe, um, on, 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 on I, forget, I forget what it was, but it came with the actual move to Montreal. But it was that, unlike others in the area, our school population was predicted to stay pretty steady. And, 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 and we have seen an uptick in, in certainly the younger grades. Thank you.
questions to us, because you may never know. Yeah. 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 Right, so I will remind the board that we'll be our meeting next week at the beginning of the start at 6 o'clock, and we will have three sets of meetings, and hopefully we can attend as well. And uh, I will look for a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Second.